How'd you feel like the new guys worked out on Sunday? Uh, uh, I was really uh, proud of them. I think, uh, you know, uh, Jalen Reeves Maven, man, he brought great energy, uh, made the big play on the first third down. Then on the next third down, made another really good night through there, made a nice play. Uh, so I was really proud of him. Um, and then Derek, I, I mean, for a rookie coming in there uh, against a really, really good offense to play the way he played, aggressive attacking, uh, I, I, I was I was proud of the way both of them played. There's going to be things that we got to get cleaned up, okay? That we will. Uh, but I, I thought the energy they played with, the passion they played with, was, was awesome. What does that have to do with responsibilities when you're playing against a team that has a quarterback like Jackson? Can you repeat that question? Yeah. I'm sorry. What does it add to their responsibilities when you're playing a team that has a quarterback like Lamar Jackson? I don't know that it adds to their responsibilities as much as it does just dialed in to being technique and assignments out and understand all point, okay, hey, I'm the quarterback player, I'm the dive player, and, and we go from there and, and we make the plays when uh, when we have a chance to make them. But, you know, the key thing when you're playing a guy like that is you do your job, you know what I mean, that if you lose, you lose concentration for one second, you try to do something that's not your job, one play, and then it costs us, you know what I mean? So I think for those guys, I thought, I, I thought they did a really good job in that game. Of, of doing that, of staying focused every play and doing their job. Is that a bigger key this week when we may not know who the quarterback is for Chicago at this point and you just staying sound and doing your job within the, the system? I'd say it's it's every week. That's got to be the point of emphasis. Um, you know, I think uh, with Chicago, obviously, uh, not knowing the quarterback, we're going to play what we see and, 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 and like you said, a do-your-job mentality. Uh, and whoever that guy may be, we'll adjust from there. Was there a play or a sequence with, with Barnes when you were back and watched the film and you said, that, that's the guy, that's the guy we, we drafted? Uh, yeah, you know, he made a nice play going to, uh, going to the defense's right towards our sideline um, in a three-by-one where he shed the tight end and made the tackle. Um, you know, where Jalen was outside him and shot it in the back cut back, and then he made it. That was a really good play. You know I mean? I think you see with him the physicality and the explosiveness. I mean, I thought that popped uh, throughout the game. It's like a tight end on offense. There's, there's so many layers to the linebacker position to, to learn the responsibilities. Um, where do you see is like maybe the, the, bigger, the biggest area of growth that he needs to, to kind of be that consistent player you're looking for? I don't know if it's one area. I think just for him, it's coming to work every day. Uh, and getting better every day in the details. Uh, but I think what he showed, I think what he definitely showed on Sunday was the moment's not too big for him. Uh, and he's just got to keep climbing and I got to keep coaching him and, and get better at the little things every single day, the details are. What was there in the first two weeks that transpired to make week three the time to play Barnes more? And what did you see? And I'm just, just curious why, why that particular moment? I don't, I don't, I don't know to, uh, that there was any one thing. Um, I think kind of with with Barnes and Jalen, that was kind of the direction we went, uh, and it, and and went from there. And now we're full steam ahead, going 100 miles an hour. I, I would not say that there was any one thing. Was cool. Is there any one thing with Jamie? Yep. Was there any one thing with Jamie? Not with, with Derek no. Or, no. No, I have uh, nothing but respect for Jamie Collins. Uh, I had a great relationship, working relationship with him, um, and he he's a great human. Uh, and that was an organizational decision. He's not here anymore, but uh, but I have nothing but positive things to say about him. Just because you were there last year, uh, sure. what, what is Roquan, what kind of challenges does he, he present to an opposing offense? Uh, he, he's a great player. He's a great, I'm not going to say one bad thing about him. I don't want to piss him off. All right? <laughs> Listen, no, he's a great player, he's a better, and he's a better person than he is a player. So I'm excited, I'm excited to see him on Sunday. I, I guess I asked that in a positive context. What, what challenges does he present in your offense? What, what does he do that, so well that, that's difficult to, to counter as an offense? I think what Roquan does well is everything. And I mean that like by what I mean is like he's a three-down linebacker who can do everything well. Like I have tremendous respect for him as a player and a person. But he, he can play on all three downs. He can play the run and the pass. And there's not a lot of linebackers in our league who – can play both as good as he does. There's guys who are exceptional against pass, the guys who are really good against run. He plays both at, a, at an extremely high level. You probably know this this answer based on what you <laughs> coach, but when you have that guy, when you have that, <coughs> that inside linebacker, middle linebacker that can play the run and the pass to that high level, how much easier does that make the entire functionality of a defense? 
Well, I think it does. I would say that's true of any time you have a great player in any position. Um, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, his ability to, to play help, helps their defense. Um, no different than any no different than any OE player, in my opinion. Yeah. Dan talked about some of the communication issues that you, that you guys had Sunday. <laughs> is that really going to be a point of emphasis this week? <clears throat> is fixing some of those issues maybe between you know the, the linebackers and the secondary and, and just getting some of that stuff cleaned up? Yeah, definitely. I think that's that that's a point of emphasis every week. I think when you look at our defense um, at every position. Um, for the most part, we have a lot of players who are really playing, learning on the run and playing. We got a young defense, uh, certainly from games played standpoint. Um, I can certainly speak for that in my position. So uh, I think that's something that's got to be a point of emphasis every week. And then every week we just got to get a little better. And I think as we do that, we're growing and we're building. And I thought we made as a defense and, and as a position group, but as a defense, I thought we made great strides from week two to week three. And now we got to keep building that. And that starts today at practice and we roll and uh, the point of emphasis, as you said, on communication, absolutely. But that's going to be, that's going to continue to be a point of emphasis every week. Mark, what's your, uh, kind of different time, what's your relationship like with Chris Spielman? I mean, we see him out here obviously helping and it's sort of a weird situation in some ways where it's kind of like the bosses. Who, who could not have a great relationship with Chris Spielman? He's the best. No, I mean, I love him. Uh, I think uh, for me, uh, he's a lot of things. He's a friend. He's a resource. Um, he's somebody who I count on day in and day out as somebody I can talk to because, you know, um, he's a, there are certain players, okay, who no matter what era they played in could play. Like Chris is one of those guys, man. He, he understands the linebacker position. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that I'm really good at. One of them was not playing football. So for me, like, it's great when I have, I think I got a good idea. I have somebody I can bounce an idea off of and talk to. I think he's outstanding with our players. But more than anything, man, he loves this team so much. And um, I think it's great just to have him around me, around my guys, uh, is awesome. How do you avoid or is there any fear of having, you know, mixed messages? I don't know, you know, if Chris says something, no, no, there isn't. I mean, like, uh, unbe- like, Chris would never put himself in that position. He's an unbelievable person, and I think, like, what Chris has done a great job of is listening to me coach, okay? And if he does make a coaching point to a player, he knows it's the same thing I've already said, okay? And I think we're, we're very aligned and very on the same page in that regard. Um, and uh, by for me... Uh, I won't ever put my ego in the way of helping my players. And I know the advice that Chris can give the players, uh, even if it maybe is different because he has a different perspective than me. And it helps. And I, I don't ever worry about that. Like, for me, I, I, we have a great relationship, and I love the way that he is around our backers. How much is he actually coaching out there? Because, you know, it seems like he's... <laughs> <laughs> he's over his shoulder with everything. Um, I, I don't feel that way. I feel like... Uh, we do a lot of things together. We talk a lot about it together. Um, I think uh, from an on-the-field standpoint, uh, he is he's there as a sounding board, um, as somebody who always, for me, like, uh, I can't see everything, but uh, he helps me cover the whole field. He's out there setting up drills already. For <laughs> no, he's, listen, he says it all the time. He's the best QC in the league. <laughs> Mark, you're only there a couple of years. Can you imagine the Bears not playing so many field goals? We're talking about moving out to Arlington. Right? Yeah, that, that's I can't even picture it. Uh, one of the great things about uh, coaching there is the tradition, um, and uh, especially when you coach the position I coach that. So that that'd be hard to believe they could win so many field. That's one thing I wanted to ask you. How, how aware of like Roquan, the history of the middle linebacker in Chicago? How aware is Roquan of that? Is that the question? He's aware. <laughs> he's aware of. He's a foot. He's a high, highly intelligent person. He, he's very aware, um, and I know he works uh, extremely hard to follow in the footsteps of those great backers. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thanks. Have a great day.